how do you feel there? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling like I'm in the right headspace, and I think that's probably the biggest thing for this race is to be, you know, doing it for the right reasons. And my, my biggest goal was to, to enjoy the day and to really, you know, just enjoy the fact that we got use of our body and I'm competing with the best guys in the world. And, uh, you know, everything else that happens is just slicing on the cake. So that's first and foremost for me. I know you have been talking a lot about drafting lately. Mm -hmm. like yes, yes, after 70.3 Worlds, yeah, I was very disenchanted with, with that race. I had my my best swim of the year, I had my best bike of the year, and my best run of the year, and then I got out-biked by 15 guys who, in previous races, many of them I had out-biked by almost five minutes off, this, off lesser power outputs. So um, I think it's ridiculous to think that people have improved their bikes by five minutes over that time. It certainly wasn't that. It was uh, a, a very large draft tail that was happening just due to the, the core and the conditions that day it was very light winds and uh, very flat for the first 60 kilometers and it's just the ideal conditions to to have a huge pace uh, line going basically so uh, you know it, it, it is what it is right now like that's the rules of the game right now so uh, I probably could have changed my strategy a bit to, to make myself more of a factor and, and that probably would have been just smashing the bike as hard as I can in those first 30k and trying to bridge the gap but I used my strategy I'd used you know to win five 70.3s earlier and uh, it just didn't work in those conditions so uh, yeah I was pretty pissed off to be honest with you and uh, you know the one thing I got going I think this race is it's a longer swim it's non wet so the packs are gonna break up a little bit and wind the wind is, is very very challenge can be at least the final 80 kilometers usually the wind is quite challenging the course is a lot more hilly uh, and in the heat of course yeah. if you try to play the game and, and, and go outside of yourself you will pay for it so uh, so I think that that certainly is gonna work to my advantage so what's your strategy like to uh, attack the first part or? No, you know what? Interestingly, I'd say patience is going to be the big, big piece for this race. And um, I got to see what the conditions are in the day. If it's a really challenging day, like strong crosswinds, then it's an individual race. And in that scenario, I will go off on my own and I'll, and I'll ride good, steady power. On the other hand, if it's, if it, as it usually is, a strong tailwind going out, then I got to team up with some guys that first 85K, just like they're doing in the front pack. And we got to create a pace line just like happened in the front pack and play the game until we get to the bottom of Javi. Then we start going uphill. Then it becomes more individual and then usually when you make the turn at Javi you got strong crosswind coming from the right you got the media vehicles on the left so there's very little draft effect happening and that's when usually the good bikers put their time in so I think it's going to be patience waiting for the right time to start to really make a move so on Saturday you will be happy with uh, like I said, if I'm just uh, crossing that line, having enjoyed the experience, because I really, I do truly enjoy pushing myself. And, you know, I was thinking about it, like, uh, you know, when you go play some badminton in the backyard or play some flag football with your friends, it's, it's just an end in itself. You're not doing it for any other reasons. And that's what I want to be doing triathlon for, purely just for the joy of competing. And so as long as I have that, that feeling still inside when I cross, it doesn't matter if it's uh, last place or first place, I'll be, it'll be a good day. Okay, that's great. Have a good uh, race. Thank you. Thank you, I appreciate it.